so FC by 10. Um, yeah, I, I think generally you're a full to tip Lee, um, which means I'll, I'll tip him now a lot. Uh, F- <laughs> FC should win this one quite comfortably. They're by far the better team. Um, hold by 14. Yeah, I mean, Lee should win one game at some point, but I, but I don't know that they will. <laughs> And I, I, I really don't see it being being this week no. against against Hull. And the someone third game... at some point though is going to be complacent against Lee, and Lee will, oh, will have... just get over the line. It, more often than not, that does happen in 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 every year, but um, there's no guarantee. No. Uh, last game of the weekend and the last one, uh, the third game on Sky, it's Saturday at five. It's Catalan against Leeds. This is the most in doubt fixture, I think, from a COVID point of view. Mm. This game appears cursed from a COVID point of view. Yeah. Um, in, it has been for, for two years now. Um, but let's assume it goes ahead. Um, I, I can't really see beyond Catalan the way they're playing. Top of the league um, at home. Should should win this game, I would say, quite comfortably against an average lead side. Catalan by 10. Yeah, I rarely say this, but I would really like Leeds to win this game. But COVID affected and not as good as Catalans, they're not going to win. Uh, I've got Catalans by 14 because they seem to have lulls in games where they can see points Catalans at the moment but against weaker sides. But um, they're going to be good enough to beat Leeds if the game yeah. goes ahead. Yeah, you think so. So it's uh, the su- game of the week in the Women's Super League is Wigan against Castleford. That's due to take place at Sunday at 12, as long as they can get everything, uh, all their ducks in a row. Someone's someone's losing their 100% record this week yeah. in that game. So that's, you know, it's a, a, a clear front runner for a game of the week in that competition. Would you care to guess who, who that would be? No. I really, it's, it's hard to separate these sides. I've said before the year that Wigan were the fourth best side for me. The, um, however, Castleford have lost players. Yeah. Um, and I think that'd be a huge difference because I think some of the players that Wigan would have, would struggle to handle aren't there. You know, the as shown in that York game, they struggled to handle Grace Field and they struggled to handle Rihanna Marshall. Um skillful powerful big physical middles Wigan struggle to handle but in this game they're not going to quite come up against the same as that so I think Wigan will win fair enough uh, you said you didn't want to say and then you said but anyway it's the championship <laughs> game of the week I think it'll be uh, close another... I think it'll be yeah, close I'll say that I, I, I don't disagree with that uh, the championship game of the week is York against Batley a game that York cannot afford to lose another game against a team that's around them in the league that's Sunday at 3 um, I'll be cheering for Batley in that one um, into League 1 game of the week it's the Welsh Derby, West Wales against North Wales, two teams struggling for form massive game this one for, for, for each of them for their own reasons Saturday at 3 Yeah, hopefully this is a kind of game that they can get some sort of press behind, I know in Wales They've been struggling to get fans in, which has been a big disappointment. I was um, going to say, have their restrictions changed from this week? I'm not. Uh, I'm not entirely certain where where they're at actually, if I'm honest, in Wales. But I think it's West Wales' best chance to win a game. Yeah, you can't. You can't really argue against that. Just because of the basis of North Wales, things didn't go their way last week. West Wales could see that as an opportunity. It's not on our league at the moment, so that would suggest to me maybe they're hoping to get fans to it, so hopefully so. Yeah, okay. Okay, so in the NRL this week, uh, our Brit picks, Broncos against Rabbitohs Thursday at 10.50. Knights against Warriors, see if Dom Young can can stay in the team, Saturday at 6. Dragons against uh, now slightly depleted British Raiders Saturday at 8.30 and then Eels against Bulldogs is Sunday at 5am for your early birds so yeah um, as always we love your fan views so make sure you get them in for the next um, week's games particularly games that uh, we won't be able to see because they're not on TV yeah I'll um, 
I'll make sure I set up the the, the schedule posts. <laughs> I've not and, got as long and, this and, week, have I? <laughs> and if games do get changed at the last minute, please, please bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> Especially during the weekend. <laughs> So especially if we're camping in the pit, in the uh, in the lakes. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, let's move into the wrap up anyway, and uh, let's get out of here for another week of SLP in. <laughs> So, the SLP quiz, as talked about at the top, is going to celebrate in some what way the career of long neck Kevin Brown. Um, so, I've got three Kevin Brown questions for you, Alan. The first one mm-hmm. is Kevin Brown scored one international try in his 10 games for England. Which country was this against? Hmm. Okay. Played ten games. I know. I thought it would have been more. Yeah. Hmm. Total stab uh, shot in the dark. I'm going to go New Zealand. No, it was France. Yeah. Okay. Came off the bench to score in a forty points to six win in Avignon back in October 2016, um, and his England debut actually also came against France back in 2010 at the Lee Sports Village. Another win for England. Fair enough. You kind of only had about six options, didn't you? So I didn't Well, I, I went with New Zealand because we seem, we seem to play with play them more than anyone else, so that was just a it was just a process of elimination. Yeah. But we scored the most points against France, so That's true as well. That's true as well. Yeah. <laughs> um which club side has Kevin Brown played the most times against with 38 <laughs> matches? And the clue I'm going to give you is it is one of the teams he has played for during his career. Most he's played against. Mm. So, you're thinking somebody who's been in the top division for the entire time. So I would discount Huddersfield on that basis. Huddersfield have been in the top division for the entire time of his career. Oh, they have actually. But okay, anyway. Well, anyway. <laughs> I'm going to say, again, stab in the dark, not a clue, Warrington. It is Warrington. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, winning 16 and losing 22 of his games against them. Um, scoring 11 tries. I think Huddersfield were ruled out because he played his most games for Huddersfield. So you have to sort of assume... And then, and then work around Huddersfield and Warrington were probably in the same sort of pos- playoff positions, and they had a few cup games against each other as well, didn't they? And also, but you, you might get a lot of kind of magic games against yeah. witness against wire type type matches. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and finally. Which Super League side has Kevin Brown scored the most tries against? And the clue here is it isn't one of the sides he's played for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to say... Hull KR. It's Wakefield. See that, that that would have been another one. I was looking for a, a team, a, a kind of a traditionally lower in the table team, who he hasn't played for. <laughs> Things yeah. like Hull KR, Wakefield, <laughs> that <laughs> kind of thing. Oh, okay. Well, he right, scored fifteen enough. against Salford, but obviously he he played for Salford, so I played think they were them. the second most. But four of those tries came for Wigan, five of them for Huddersfield, five of them for Witness, and two for Warrington. Um, he also has won the most times against Wakefield, but that's tied with with London he beat both those two sides 20 times in his career wow there you go a long career um yeah exactly and some uh you know positive memories in that for Kevin Brown um what recommendations do you have for us Alan, have you been busy since you were last on? Not with anything exciting. I was really struggling this week, I have to say. Uh, it feels like everything that I've done in the last four weeks, the things that I've already recommended in some <laughs> form or another. Uh, 
<laughs> whether that be go, where I go on holiday or whatever. So, so I'm I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel here. So I freely admit that. Um, but I, it's something I had for my tea tonight, and I really liked it. So, um, it was from the Wicked Kitchen Range at Tesco, which is for those uninitiated, that's their um, in-house vegan range, and it was some um, katsu um, flavored Kiev style things which were, which were quite nice i enjoyed them they were quite spicy a little bit too spicy for um for anna but um, i enjoyed them so there you go good stuff i told you i was scraping the bottle the bottom of the barrel <laughs> yeah the literally the last thing you did before the show <laughs> literally the last thing i've last thing i did but other than that it would be like getting the bus to work and <laughs> what, what, what more do you want to know you know what i mean yeah well i, I had the, a week off work last week and did a few ex, extra things to 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 the what we've done in the last year or so so i went camping in the lakes i stayed at rydal hall campsite i wouldn't i wouldn't say don't stay there but it <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't bad nice views nice grounds and, and all that sort of stuff it is um I think a Christian retreat, as well as letting, you know, Even. atheists like me <laughs> pay them money to stay there. So there was a, a bit of a strange vibe as well. But um, but yeah, that it was fine. Um, but you my recommendations to the, come... uh, to the to the campfire to sing Kumbaya or anything where you are. We no, we did light a campfire though. Just me and Emma. We didn't sing around it. Um, and I did. <laughs> Because I was, because I had a few beers, I think it was a funny idea to put it out by weeing on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> honestly. But if you follow me on Instagram, my personal Instagram, you'll see some uh, some fire action, not weeing action. Um, yeah, we, we we don't want that. No, <laughs> no, nobody wants that. But we we uh, when we were in the Lake District, we went into Grassmere, had a few beers and stuff at the Good Sport, which is grassmere brewery which is a relatively new breweries it's their kind of um tap house as it were sort of pretty much the first publish you get into grassmere um so that was that that was all good but the best thing about it was one of the food options they had was these lamb meatballs that were really nice really nice um so if you are in that area of the lake district and eat meat then <laughs> check out the lamb meatballs at the good sport and have have a pint of ipa to drag to to go alongside it um then on our way back home as we were sort of heading out of the lakes towards coming home we we stopped off at the hawkshead brewery which isn't in hawkshead it's in staveley um because i think they they outgrew their uh, original base in in hawkshead a few years ago now and um but yeah that was really good we really liked it in there uh, they don't do their own food, but you can get food brought in from the bakery that's next door. So we had some lunch there, um, which is a really nice sandwich that they made, actually. They got the order wrong the first time around, but they fixed it quickly, so without any fuss or hassle. So I was going to say, you know, you can't knock them for the fact that they, that they didn't get the order quite right the first time around, but it was really, really nice. Um, and the, the, the sort of setting and stuff in the Hawkshead Brewery, even though it's on like the back of an industrial estate. Uh, uh, once you're in it, inside it, it's really cool. Um, good tunes playing and that sort of stuff. And then we tried the Mexican restaurant restaurant that's opened in Preston called Lanetta as well. Um, I would definitely recommend that. Uh, Emma ended up having something that was vegan, so prick your ears up um, for that, Alan. But... Uh, I had I had a beef burrito, but <laughs> but it was really nice, um, and it and it was not expensive either. The drinks weren't cheap, but the food was really well reasonably priced for what you got. And in fact, if you are around Preston, um, which might be one or two people, you never know who listen to this, <laughs> then they're twenty five percent off their food throughout throughout June. Although they did have an oven fire on Saturday. <laughs> So I don't know if they're open at the moment, but check that check out their social media pages. I'm sure they'll confirm whether they're open or not, and uh, and go there. So a bit a bit to recommend for me this week after struggling for a few weeks. So so yeah, um, 
it's uh, Tim back next week on the show. Hopefully we have 